Thank you, Doctor. Thanks for the um, kind introduction, and I thank the organizing committee to invite me to uh, join this uh, uh, very um, uh, impressive uh, program. And today, I will uh, discuss with um, uh, uh, discuss mostly the uh, new bricks, uh, new brick source in the treatment of acute primary leukemia, and share some uh, data and thoughts on the future uh, uh, direction. Um, first of all, I will go th quickly the um, um, recent guideline for treating APL, and m mostly uh, I will share with you some uh, data of recent study for further optimization of uh, the treatment of these special diseases. Um, and I, uh, mostly I will focus on the role of uh, upfront uh, use of arsenic um, uh, in the newly diagnosed patient. So uh, for the uh, treatment APL, uh, I think most uh, experienced uh, hematologists are now uh, quite comfort to facing this kind of patient because most patients have uh, quite good uh, uh, favorable outcome. And, and go through different uh, guidelines. Uh, nowadays, mm, the introduction, uh, induction therapy is mostly composed of regular acid and chemotherapy. And uh, if patient relapse from the initial study, uh, initial treatment, arsenic will be the best uh, treatment option for relapsed patient. And here is uh, uh, Martin Tolman's review on, on several uh, um, large study, and uh, you will see most complete remission rate in this study are over 90%, and the long-term survival uh, is over 75 or even to 90%. Uh, no matter what kind of chemo uh, combination with retinal acid. And based on this uh, uh, treatment uh, model, uh, the disease can be uh, further classified into low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk. And the most exciting uh, breakthroughs, I think, is, is now the role of arsenic as upfront treatment. Um, the rationale to use arsenic as a uh, first line treatment is we already have documented the efficacy of arsenic in treating relapsed APL. Um, in not only have a good remission rate, but a sizable patient uh, after relapse has become long survival. And there was uh, also initial data to show that um, in newly diagnosed patient, even as a monotherapy, arsenic can um, achieve long term survival. And mostly in the laboratory study, a um, lot of group, including um, our group uh, led by Professor uh, uh, Zhu Chen and etc., um, they show that arsenic is very important in the degradation of PMI of uh, oncoprotein. Uh, it can induce differentiation and apoptosis and even target leukemia stem cell for in APM model. So in Shanghai Institute of Hematology led by Professor Zhang Yiwang, uh, we uh, develop a, uh, a protocol um, including arsenic in both induction and maintenance therapy. In induction, we use uh, com combined retinal uh, acid and arsenic. And in consolidation, we're using three cycles of consolidation chemotherapy. And in maintenance phase, we're using five cycles of three months sequential uh, uh, maintenance. That means the first month, we use ultra. The second month, we use arsenic. And the third month, we use low-dose chemotherapy. And here is uh, our study of first 87, uh, 85 patients with a median uh, uh, follow-up around um, 70 months, and for the whole group, the overall survival and disease-free survival is about 90%. And in case of 80% who achieved complete remission, um, the long-term survival is almost around uh, 95%. So this exciting data is, uh, uh, is, is, is quite impressive. And most concern about our protocol is the upper um, use of arsenic may associate with some long-term toxicity. So uh, to monitor the uh, 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 arsenic concentration, uh, we do a, a, a study try to figure out after two years uh, when the patient stopped the treatment, uh, what the residual level of arsenic. And it's showing that uh, in patient, they still have uh, a slightly higher arsenic concentration than normal control but uh, it's much less than the patients who are still receiving arsenic, and all these levels are within 
the safety level, and there was no, up to now, no uh, uh, arsenic-associated toxicity documented. So it seems to be at least uh, it's safe. Uh, and then, uh, after that, we have um, uh, more co uh, publications and studies uh, com coming out to use arsenic as a frontline therapy. And this is a North American uh, intergroup study. Uh, they are using uh, arsenic uh, monotherapy as a consolidation. Um, they are using ultra and chemo as both in induction and maintenance. And here is showing uh, a event-free survival. Uh, the group using arsenic consolidation uh, has much improved than the uh, chemotherapy uh, alone. And here is the overall survival, though the, uh, uh, it, there was also a, a, a trend towards a better overall survival. And then there was uh, another uh, uh, M. Anderson um, a study. It's a very interesting study. They're using arsenic as induction and post-remission therapy combined with uh, retinal acid. And in high-risk patients, that means with wide breath count over 10, uh, they're adding um, CD33 mono antibody. And in that serious patient, they achieve a very uh, high complete remission rate uh, around 92%, and with a three year overall survival around 85%. So, this is the first, I think, this is the first serious report using arsenic and ultra without any chemotherapy. So, even though now uh, more and more people are using uh, arsenic as a frontline treatment for newly diagnosed patient, but uh, what is the best? Um, um, cycle and, and uh, um, stage to use arsenic still remain uh, solved. Here I listed um, uh, several different studies. For example, in our center, we're using arsenic in induction and maintenance with a total six cycle. Uh, in uh, more recent Australia APML4 study, I will show a little bit later, they're using three cycle in induction and consolidation. So you will see there was uh, so many different um, uh, uh, way of using arsenic as a frontline treatment. And the second um, uh, breakthroughs probably will be a uh, retinal acid and arsenic uh, combined combination uh, with reduced chemotherapy or even without chemotherapy for the treatment of APL. So if this is uh, true, the retinal acid and arsenic without chemotherapy uh, can cure a disease, that would be a very appealing concept. And also they will reduce uh, or at least uh, avoid uh, the potential toxicity of chemotherapy. The rationale is mostly uh, the labor based on laboratory study showing that arsenic and ultra may synergy in targeting APL, not only in targeting PMI of uh, oncoprotein, and also um, retinal acid can upgrade a specific gene we call AQP9, which will up, uh, upregulate it after ultra treatment. And this is facilitated the arsenic into cells and increased arsenic sensitivity of leukemia cells. And also, the combination of ultra and arsenic may target leukemia stem cell. So here is the study by if today's group, they are using a, a mice model, very beautifully showing that the uh, arsenic and ultra combination the degradation of PMI alpha were leading to the clearance of leukemia initial cell and cured uh, this disease in a uh, mice model. And if you block the PMI alpha uh, degradation by um, botizumab, you will rescue um, um, the disease. So, and, and then uh, following that, uh, Scott Cogan uh, have a very nice review and uh, and listed it all the uh, uh, treatment model and um, their clinical. Uh, uh, outcome uh, with their uh, mechanism. For example, retinal acid, it's mostly a transactivation, uh, and they can cause differentiation of leukemia cells, but quite few uh, elimination of leukemia initial cells. So uh, the relapse will be common. And the best way of treating this disease in lab is recognized com combined with arsenic, and not only can in induce differentiation of leukemia cells and uh, can induce a very rapid elimina elimination of uh, leukemia stem cells, then and, and most patients might be uh, cured by this uh, treatment model. 
And uh, there was a lot of clinical data now. Uh, we can see chemotherapy may not be necessary in all, at least in all APL patients. Here is the data to show that arsenic monotherapy may already be sufficient in most patients because they can achieve um, a really good more than 80% long-term disease-free survival and overall survival. And again, uh, this is uh, M. Denison's uh, uh, data they are showing that ultra and arsenic may be sufficient in low-risk diseases, but may not be for high-risk. In high-risk cases, they're still using CD33, uh, still have some cytotoxic uh, effect. Uh, here is showing this is uh, uh, the blue line is the low-risk uh, uh, disease, and the patient have uh, uh, quite good over uh, 85 or 90 percent of long-term survival. And more interesting is the uh, newly um, uh, just uh, published, uh, I think two days ago, the Australian APM4 uh, data. They're using three cycles of ultra and arsenic in both induction and uh, consolidation. And uh, all patients receive only one cycle of either rubicin in the induction therapy. And uh, following consolidation, they just giving patient retinal acid and very low dose chemo as a maintenance. And here is their two years relapse free survival and uh, overall survival. It's pre very impressive. It's um, almost around 90%. So um, the conclusion is may not be necessary to say that ultra and arsenic combination is sufficient for all patients, but at least uh, these data show that ultra and arsenic combination can reduce significantly the use of chemotherapy, particularly anthracycline, adorubicin, in newly diagnosed patients, and all these APL, including low-risk and high-risk patients. And when compared to the APML3 trial, in that trial they are using ultra and adorubicin for several cycles, and they they already been show that APM4 study has a much superior um, uh, overall survival and disease-free survival. And now uh, we have a Chinese um, a key program. Uh, this is, um, we already launched uh, this month the national level multicenter study. Um, we are aiming to test the theory that combination of ultra and arsenic with or without chemotherapy in unit APL. So um, now our, uh, we are uh, divide patient based on the risk uh, of disease. And in the low-risk patient, uh, we are testing a theory that does the addition of arsenic can replace chemotherapy. And in the intermediate or high-risk patient, does arsenic can reduce the chemotherapy, particularly in that regimen we did not use satorabine. So this is our um, uh, design. In low risk, this is randomized study between ultra plus IDA and ultra versus arsenic. And um, in the uh, high risk, though, this is a, a, a randomized between uh, RSC and no RSC arm. And the, another exciting uh, development and, and potentially breakthrough is the oral formula of arsenic. And um, uh, there was an um, initial uh, interesting uh, data from Hong Kong developed a uh, oral arsenic trial solution uh, in their retrospective analysis of uh, 60, uh, 76 patients in first remission uh, only as maintenance therapy. They have been shown that uh, um, they have been shown that uh, 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 a very low uh, relapse rate, and there was a, some uh, uh, toxicity, but mostly. Uh, 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 tolerable, and, and this is their uh, overall uh, data. But most exciting things is also uh, uh, led by Professor Xiao Junhuang. This is also, he's the national PI of this uh, randomized uh, multi-center study, um, direct compare oral arsenic and IV arsenic trioxide. This is a very simple and um, uh, straightforward uh, designing, um, uh, compare with retinal analysis combined with IV arsenic and oral arsenic. And this, uh, I got some slides from um, Professor Huang, and this is the, uh, their patient characteristic. It's uh, quite balanced between different uh, risk of disease. And this is the uh, 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 result, uh, the outcome from computer remission point of view, molecular remission, and there was an exactly no difference between oral and IV arsenic. 
And here is, is the most um, um, best overall survival and disease survival, almost 98% at, at three years. So this is a toxicity profile. It's also showing that oral arsenic and IV arsenic has no significant difference. So I think that this paper is uh, almost done, and I, I think they will submit to New England Journal or Lancet, I, and I hope uh, we can read the, uh, the paper more in detail. So um, uh, I think um, in a limited time, I just present some of uh, the clinical uh, data and the published uh, data. And the take home message is uh, uh, acute problem leukemia is now become a curable disease based on the uh, uh, retinoid and arsenic combination treatment. Um, the frontline use of this uh, uh, ultra and chemotherapy followed by arsenic is uh, as a, uh, a traditional uh, way of treating these diseases. And now, uh, ultra and arsenic combination as a front line may further improve the outcome. And oral arsenic may improve the tolerance and convenience and uh, long-term safety we still need to uh, uh, observe. And up, uh, though this disease is almost curable now, but uh, we still need uh, further uh, optimization uh, through uh, well-designed clinical trials. Um, and the aim is to reduce chemotherapy or even eliminate chemotherapy based on, on, on risk uh, stratification. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Xianghu. So uh, we'd like to have the one question. What are you doing uh, when the patient uh, do not respond to a combination con of atra and arsenic? Uh, usually, uh, for typical APL, uh, uh, the, the response to ultra and arsenic combination will be almost 100%. When the patient didn't respond to this combination for more than six weeks, usually we go back to uh, cytogenetics and, and, um, uh, and the molecular to see this is uh, 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 a typical APL or it's uh, even no, not APL. Okay. Thank you very much.